Mario, Ruby, let's go. Thank you for joining us for another Candid Conversation. My name is Muriel. Ruby is not able to be with us today as she was in close contact with someone that tested positive for COVID. She is quarantining for safety measures. I'm going to do my best today in her absence. Let's get the show started. Just because you see a smile does not mean everything is perfect. We all have a story. On the show, we discuss topics that are unspoken and taboo in our community. We are excited to have a conversation with Marcus Boyd. We will be discussing his childhood challenges, music, film, and autism. Welcome to the show, Marcus. We believe our childhood shapes us on who we become as adults. Tell us a little bit about your childhood. Um, my childhood, I come from a family of 22 kids. How many kids? Um, between 22. 22? Uh, yes, two kids. Two oh, kids. two. <laughs> two okay. Kids. No, 22. 22. 20. Oh, my gosh. Yes, ma'am. What? Um, between Brooklyn and Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Um, um, I got diagnosed with autism April 12, 1993. I was 10. You were 10 years um, old? I was not, okay. Yes, ma'am. I was nonverbal. Now, about 13, 13 and a half, I started speaking at a two-year-old level. I started speaking like this at 17, I mean, almost 18 okay. years old. And um, I've been in 16, 17 foster homes, 16 group homes, 16 mental institutions, four well, inpatient happened? hospitals. Let's go back a little bit. So what happened? <laughs> so you weren't you weren't raised with your parents? No, no, I was not raised with Big Tommy and Tina. No, ma'am. Mm, okay, so you went through different, you went through different group homes. Right, because when I was, uh, you know, four years old, Big Tommy uh, was pistol whipping me outside. Um, and because I was different, my brothers, they didn't have the problems that I had. So I was different. Now, you're talking about in the 80s. I'm showing my age. I'm 39. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, you're young. You know, the thing, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it was like autism. They didn't really have groups of brochures or pamphlets or anything like that in the early, mid-80s. Okay. It, was, it was not like it is now. Right. So, you know, back then it was holy oil, a church, somebody prayed that out of you, had the situation, whooped you until you conform. Mm-hmm. Had the situation. Yeah. Right. So when, you know, I was having tender tantrums, emotional behaviors, when I was, you know, slobbing on myself and I was using the bathroom on myself and stuff of that nature, mm-hmm. you understand know what I'm saying? Like, the Tommy really didn't understand. You didn't understand why I couldn't be like my brother. Right. So that's when they put you in the, they just gave you up for adoption? Is that what it is? They just put no, you up No, no. The Tommy broke my ribs. No, man. He broke my ribs. And um, when he broke my ribs, my dad, my Tina's best friend was the intern at the Cab County um, foster care. It's Child and Children's Services. So her best friend took me. Okay. Okay, and so then they that's how you continue to go through different homes. You were being abused in the homes? Um, yeah, I really I was um you know, back then it was doing it for it was just doing it for the check. It was twenty four hundred dollars. It was three to four hundred dollars in clothing vouchers. It was okay. <laughs> I mean okay. you know, per child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, um, the first home I got into, you know, I mean, they tied me to a heat furnace. They hit me with oh. a miniature 12 gauge. They, oh, my goodness. I mean, it's, it's different homes with different stories. So I never, I mean, I did have positive foster parents, mm-hmm. but it was not a lot of them. It was one of them out of 16, 17. It was like one of them. Oh, my gosh. That's so un- unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that you went through all that. 
and I'm sure the story can continue. We don't have enough time to really talk about everything that you went through, correct? Right. Yes, ma'am. Right. Wow. So now, but you, you're so, you, you seem to be such a positive person, even though you have gone through so much. What keeps you, what gets you there? Why? What? Why? Because you could be angry, you know? I you could. I, I, I could be angry, but I, I think, you know, if, if God, number one, yes. I put God first, and and if, if, if my family, number two. You know, I mean, it's not easy. I wouldn't say it's easy to deal with me, but I do think, I, I do thank God for my, my girlfriend. I do thank God for Aww. my daughter. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, it's, it's, um, it's the circle, the village that got around you. My PR, my team, everybody that deals with autism, activist, Marcus Boyd is mm -hmm. a collective. So awesome. there's good days and there's bad there's days. There's bad days. So. Oh my gosh. So what, so when you, re when you turned 18, is it that when you, you came out of the foster, foster home? What age is it? Um, I went to the, well, actually, I was 21 because um, they had the independent living program. I don't know if they still do it. Again, I'm old. Okay. So back then, they had the independent living program where they set you up in an apartment, take 30% of your income. Okay. And back then, you know, I was working at McDonald's, seven twenty-five an hour. I don't, I don't know the minimum wage now. <laughs> but mm. that's what it was then. So 21 years old, you had your own place. You were living no, somewhere. No, 18, 18, I had my own place. Okay. Through the foster care system. Okay. You did it, though. You did it. You made it. You made it out. Right? Not necessarily. Not, no? Not, not, not necessarily. I, all I'm going to say is peer pressure is real, and sometimes when you try to impress street people, mm -hmm. you become them. Okay, I understand. Because I was going to say, you, you got out of the foster home, but I feel like mentally, you know, it still carries on. You know, it still, it carries, does. It, it, does. It still carries on with you. But you've done some amazing things, though. A little bit. Little <laughs> stuff, man. Just a little bit. Really Major. talented, 13-time award-winning music producer and composer. And the yes, first African-American to win four awards. As an autism activist, really, just a little bit, Man. just a little bit, a little bit, a little small, a little small stuff, small, small. <laughs> what is your push? What is your motivation? Because it's not about me. It's about every autism individual and every autism family worldwide. I don't want nobody to go through what I went through mm -hmm. with having autism. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to feel like they don't have a voice or right. nobody cares about them. Right. And but, just because they're nonverbal, that they less than. Mm -hmm. That's not the truth. Because you were nonverbal for how long? Until I was 13, 13 and a half. Okay. I know you've been through something. You even did a short film, right? You yeah, I did. The Boy With No Voice. I did. What a perfect name for it, right? <laughs> this is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> what a perfect name for it. You want to share a little bit about that? Uh, the, the amazing uh, award-winning Tina Bridges from TLA Agency and TLB Productions mm -hmm. in Atlanta, Georgia, filmed the short film. Okay. And it, we we cast some amazing actors and actresses and stuff, and it was in a depiction of my life as having autism. Okay. The reason why this film is so important because it comes from somebody with autism. It's not like an advocate, a parent, guardian. Right. Uh, a social worker mm -hmm. that deals with people with autism. This is coming from somebody that actually has autism. That's right. My gosh. And so is, is it out? It's out right now? Yes. We, okay. we dropped it two months ago. Oh, okay. And, you know, right, right now it won two international film awards. And right now it's being featured in major film festivals. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank That's you. awesome. <laughs> <So good. laughs> That's awesome. And you also have a clothing line. I do. I have a clothing <laughs> line and a shoe line. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my gosh. I have my own shoes. Is this one of the shorts that you're wearing? Are you wearing something? No. Like no, no, okay. no. This, this is the trend. This is the trend. This, <laughs> okay. This is the trend. My, my girlfriend got this for me for my birthday. So, okay. you know, she's my stylist. Yeah. Oh, she's your stylist. <laughs> she did a good job. <laughs> she did a good job. She did a good job. 
You have so much going on, though. You're so talented. You're very smart, well-spoken. You're doing great. You're doing a good job. I know, I mean, being in growing up with autism, I'm sure that you got bullied. You were a victim of bullying. People probably tried to, you know, beat up on you, curse, yell. I mean, I, I'm from the project. So, I mean, that's not called bullying. It's called hazing. It's called what? normal life. Oh, okay. You walk out the door, and that's what you get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, if you are a small a bit different. Yeah. So, yeah. I did get bullied a lot. I did get jumped and beat up a lot. I was on the small bus. I was. I did deal with IEPs and mm -hmm. and uh, special education classes and stuff. My sisters did fight for, you. for me. Mm -hmm. Except my my brothers didn't do nothing. My sisters were Sister. fighting boys. Well, why is it that your Why do you feel like your brothers did nothing? I think at the time. I mean, you got to understand the time. We talk early nineties. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you want to be cool. You okay. don't want to have a little brother tagging along that has mental issues. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. You, you're trying to impress girls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. They felt <laughs> like it wasn't cool. Right. But my sisters didn't care. They really didn't care. They're going to fight for their brother. Yeah. That's how we mm -hmm. were. We have a, I have a brother that he was born with um, hydrocephalus, which is an enlarged head, water in the brain, basically. And we fought for him. We didn't care. We were right there. They love you. They love you. They're right there with you. <laughs> so how, tell me about your support system now. I know you said your girlfriend is a big supporter. Uh, yeah, some yeah my, my, my girlfriend, Queen, she's definitely a big support. She plays a lot. She has a lot of background stuff for me to make sure that I'm, I'm good. My PR, mm -hmm. my booking agent, um, the rest of the people that's on this autism activist team, right. There's a lot of them. I don't want to forget nobody, but they, they, they don't, they don't always get paid. You know what I'm saying? But they believe in so you. They, they believe in the cause. They do it out of love. Right. They do it out of love. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When we started almost five years ago, nobody knew that I was an autism activist. It wasn't popular to say an autism activist. No, nobody knew this. So at the end of the day, they was coming out their pocket. Right. So. Right. They and wanted you it to be that heard. You stand for. Yeah. They they wanted this message to be out. They wanted to support you. Yeah, they wanted to. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've done. What do you see yourself doing in um five years? Five, five years. years. Oh. What is your goal? What you what do you have going on? <laughs> uh, uh, more books. More, more books. books. Okay. Talk, uh, uh, yeah, because I'm working on my debut book, The Boy With No Voice Autobiography. I'm working on a children's Good. book. Good. I, I got a coloring book coming out. Um, so in five years, we're going to have the Betty Place. It's going to be a Boys and Girls Club slash oh, community center. That is great. Um, so I am honoring my girlfriend's mother, uh, Betty Larkin. And I'm, in five years, we're going to have the Betty Place. is going to be up. And kids are going to be able to continue Miss Mama's Betty's dream, and that was to, to be able to help any kid that she sees. Oh, no what a kids blessing! Be left behind. What a blessing! Mm -hmm. She's still living. The mother is still living. This is what she does. Uh, uh, Mama Betty, no ma'am. Mama Betty passed away, but you know, okay. with with Queen and her siblings, they keep her legacy living. So. Right. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's nice of you to help help make that happen. Because there are so many kids that are unfor you know, that are not that are less fortunate. So I think that's that's awesome that you're able to do that. Keep doing it. You are one blessed man. That's for sure. Little bit. Little, little small bit. <laughs> you're doing great. You're doing awesome. Um, how can the viewers contact you? Ah, uh, well, um, Facebook, you can go on Marcus Leonardo Boyd. Instagram, you can go on Autism Activist Marcus Boyd. Mm -hmm. Um, my website will be up soon, autismactivistmarketboy.com. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can go on Facebook and contact my PR, Kathy Taylor. Tell all in. She's in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Thank you for being the voice because there are so many. I have a few friends that their children are autistic and they feel like there's something wrong. Like, oh, my child, you know, I have a child, but there's nothing I can do for him. You know, so they no, no, speak you, you, to you see you, you tell them to Facebook me. 
that on the Facebook me. Yes. I give them words of encouragement. Yes. And if they, if they if they ever see this video, mm -hmm. any parent that has a child with autism, mm -hmm. you're gonna get upset. You're gonna get up. You're gonna be mad. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna be depressed. You're gonna lose faith. Mm -hmm. You're gonna ask questions. Yeah. But what you cannot do is forget the mission and forget the journey that you're on. Yes. God gave you that child for a reason. Yes. Yeah. Uh, who who knew who knew that I would be seeking or who knew that I'll be nominated or I have major nominations or or awards? Nobody. That was not in my future. Mm -hmm. So you could not give up on your child because they could be the next president, race yeah, car driver, lawyer. They could be anything. That's the truth. Stuff at home. That is the truth. Thank you so much for that. I myself also, my grandson, is autistic. So my daughter is. You know, she works with him, and he's getting the help and you know that he needs so you're right that's correct never ever give up don't feel like there's something because a lot of parents feel like it's something that they did you know but god on, god knows how much we can deal with right he only gives us so much that amen. We can, right? amen amen so it's going to be okay and looking at you what a great example you are such a great example proud Good of day. you and your accomplishments <laughs> proud of you I'm going to have a Thank candid so minute much. with you. It's called a candid minute. I'm going to have a candid minute with you. What advice would you give to another young teen going through what you went through with bullying and autism? Um, you got to be able to face your bully. You can't let them bully you because they're going to be out there. Trust me, you can run from them. I tried to run, jump fences, hide in houses. Mm -hmm. I did. And it, I had five of them. I had five bullies. You may have one. You mm -hmm. may have three. Right. But you have to be able, I'm not saying fight them back, because there's more ways to fight somebody instead of using your fist. Right. You have to be able to outsmart them by getting out the way and getting more educated. Do okay. not let somebody else stop you. Do not let uh, somebody say what you can and cannot do. You have to be able to create your own yes. Even yes. with autism, even with autism, that's just a diagnosis. That's not a life stopper. That's right. You can do anything you put your mind to. And as Amen. long as you have faith and God is in front of you, and you got your village, your family, you can be anything, anything. in this world. I love it. That's perfect. Perfect. Well said. I hope everybody receives that and, and not give up. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. Wish you so much success, more success. Okay, well, y'all have a blessed day. Thank, Thank you so you. much for this amazing opportunity. Thank you for being and a guest. I enjoyed you. I enjoyed yes, our conversation. Be blessed. Continue to be blessed. Yes, ma'am. All right. And then we'll be sending you some information, okay? Okay. All right. We thank you for joining us. Please tune in next Tuesday at 6 p.m. for another guest right here from our community. Autism is a spectrum disorder. The myth suggests that all people with autism share the same traits. The reality is no two people with autism are alike. Can you remember who you were before the world told you who you should be? There is a quote that says, the problem is not the person's disability. The problem is society's view of the person's abilities. Marcus is a shining example of how to never underestimate what someone is capable of doing due to autism. He showed us that you can do anything you put your mind to Let's continue to speak hope, love, and kindness. We are Real Sisters, sharing real stories within our community. We thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk About It. Oh,